On today's show I've got something really special for you and something that you can achieve in your own kitchen and that is to bone and roll a shoulder of lamb. So without further ado, bottoms up, heads down, let's crack on. So here we are guys, the star of the show, a beautiful Somerset shoulder of lamb. Now this is a fantastic piece of meat, so versatile, you know you can use the neck fillet for curries, you can use the foreshank as a lamb shank, you can actually cut it through as shoulder chops, you can roll it for a Sunday roast and uh, you can do diced lamb, you can do mince lamb and a lot more other things with it. But what we're going to do today is to debone it and then we're going to roll it. So the first step to do this is to actually remove the rib cage. Now if you was working in a butcher shop or in an industrial environment, normally these rib cages are just sheeted out and thrown away. Uh, the reason why that is is because it costs more to pay the butcher to remove these bits of meat than these bits of meat are worth. But because we're actually doing this in a kitchen, or you're doing it in your own kitchen, then it's actually worthwhile for you to leave these bits of muscles, or intercostal muscles, with the shoulder, just to maximise the joint. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So first of all, before I start, we're going to maintain the edge of our knife, as always. I'll try and show you that in front of the camera. If anybody would like to know how to use a butcher steel, please look at my other video. So, the first step. So here we're what we call the chine meat. So I'm going to loosen the chine meat. Like I said, normally this sort of meat, which is attached to the rib cage, will be thrown away. But I'm just going to move that to one side. And then I'm going to cut, using the point of my knife here, just the point, and move that along very slowly, following these little bones. So we create minimum waste. Now we're going to move over to this side and just put the point of the knife in and follow that neck bone round. So now we're going to turn it round like so and then we're going to put our knife in there, just the point and we're just going to follow the end of that breastbone all the way along. And if you look, I'm not cutting into any meat, just through the fat. Like that. Okay. So the next step, we've got this meat on the inside of the sternum there. We're going to remove that because we're going to use that as well. So just the point of the knife down. And we'll just put that into our trim pile. So the next step, we take our butcher's saw, okay, and then in the corner, just inside of there, we're going to saw. And nice and gentle. And remember, we just want to saw through the bone and not into the underlying muscles. So you just wait till you hear that tone change. There you go, straight through. Now the next step, if I can show you this, I'll just clear that away for you. You see some cartilage there. So what we're gonna do is run our knife along the cartilage, right across there, and across there, and we're gonna separate the breastbone from the ribs. So we do a dagger grip, which is this. Place the knife on the cartilage, bring it across, like so, put your knife down, and we should be able to break that through, like so. I turn it around this way now, point to the knife again, always remember where this is, keep that well out of the way, and we remove that. So there's the breastbone removed, just put that to one side, we can trim a little bit of meat of that, out of that after. Do a little bit more edge maintenance. 
So now we're going to remove the neck bone and the chine bone. So we started there before, so we're going to go a little bit further in. Now we don't want to go very deep here. Just with the point of the knife touching the bone. Once you get used to doing this, you'll be able to feel the bone through the point of your knife. It sort of becomes part of your arm really. So we just move that down. Keep following the bone. And that's the neck bone removed. We just place that to one side. So now we're left with the, these ribs. Now there's a couple of reasons, as I said, that I've, I've left these on here. Firstly, we're gonna utilize these intercostal muscles inside by leaving that with the meat. So we're gonna maximize our joint. But also, taking these single ribs out is really good practice for your point work on your knife. So, one step at a time, or one rib at a time. Through, through, nice and gentle. An old butcher once told me you never cut where you can't see. So we're going to follow his uh, philosophy, shall we say? That was one of his philosophies, anyway. And then move that down. Just carry on. Remember where your hand is. Keep that out of the way. It's a lovely, satisfying thing to do. Go. just coming to the last one now so taking all the bones out there we go so all these muscles would have been thrown away normally excellent so a bit of edge maintenance so next we're going to remove this fat just following the seam inside of there and try not to take any meat with it if possible Take this fat away as well. Now with this, if I turn it around this way, here we have the neck fillet, and in here we have what we call the tape. Now this tape, in beef it's called paddywhack, and this helps to bring the head back up. We come from this side, that way. So we're gonna take that out. Again, try and just take the tape out on its own. We don't wanna take any meat with it. So sometimes you can just give that a little pull and out she pops. So here we are with the neck fillet, beautiful, beautiful cut of meat. Always keep checking the bones, gristle, as you see a little bit more paddy white left in there. So now we're going to trim these bones, these bone chips away. So when I roll this shoulder along, I'm, before I do that I'm going to actually remove the uh, neck fillet so this is very easy to do just see this white piece of fat here this will take us down to a seam there it is you can just see it come in and just take that away I mean that is a, as I said before a fantastic piece of meat just dice it up put it in a beautiful curry or just have it in a stew it's absolutely wonderful so we'll just put that to one side now then, what we're going to be doing now is to remove all this blood meat and all this excess fat at the top. So a very quick job. The butcher is always vigilant for bone chips, gristle, fat, or excess fat should I say. Or anything that would ruin the customer's eating experience. Just take that away. Got a bit of uh, blood meat there as well. Take that excess fat off there. Put that onto, to one side. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we've got to find the joint between this bone here, which runs through there, and the blade bone. The way we do this, we look there's the blade bone, the back end, and it comes down into this joint here. So we turn it this way. Now on pigs, you've got this little gland here. 
not a gland, it's actually like a vein top. And that's normally is a good pinpointer to where the joint is. But with lamb, it's a little bit further over this way. So if you find the vein, then look for the fat above it and you won't go far wrong. So we're just gonna pop that into there and just see how we do. So this is always a satisfying part. Isn't that lovely? So I just pop that and we'll have a look. Straight in the joint, straight through. Right, now we're going to tunnel bone this out. Now this is, I suppose, quite a difficult thing for the beginners to do. Um, I could open bone it, but I would really like to keep this joint as complete as possible and keep its integrity. So, we're going to start at the back end, which is here. And we're going to start to work our way up this cartilage. Just take our time, there's no need to rush. You know, it's not a race, like it is in some of these bowling holes, it's just not a race. We can take our time and actually enjoy our butchery. So we look inside of there. So if I put it back, you can't tell that I've done anything really. So now we're going to loosen this joint here. So we're going to loosen the meat do it from this side, then you can see it from the top and that way, and down this side. Then we're going to go through that joint properly, like that. And make sure that this end meets the other end that I've just done. There you go. So now what I'm going to do. You see the joint there? I'm going to put my knife underneath there, underneath there, and loosen it underneath. And then we'll be able to put this meat over there and pull the blade bone out. So just place your knife underneath. It's a little scraping noise, so you hit the bone. That cuts the connective tissue underneath as well. And then we're going to get our fingers in. push that forward so we have that. Now I'm just going to point of our knife just down the side of one side, you don't need to go down this side, a lot of people do, you don't need to, and just pull that as quickly as you can and pull. How lovely is that? Beautiful and clean. So take your time, nice and steady, and there you go. There's a blade bone removed in real time, lovely and clean. So the next step, we're going to tunnel bone this out. But before we do that, we need to loosen the top part of it first. I've left the shank on because that'll help you manoeuvre this joint here. So we'll just do a bit of edge maintenance. So just come that way with the point and really take your time around here. You don't want to be sticking a hole through the back of this because it will look a bit messy once we come to uh, to tie it up. So that's the sound that I always like to hear and the sound that I encourage my students to make because that tells me that they're in the right place on the bone. I'm not cutting through the meat too much. There is a wonderful tool called a ham gouge, which is generally used for pork legs, for hams, but it works really, really well on this sort of bone, for tunnel boning. So, see, that's all loosened. I'll just show you that. And now, I'm gonna turn it round. Veg maintenance. And now I'm gonna bone out the shank, because what's gonna happen is that the shank meat is gonna be put back inside of the shoulder because we just want to use this for a roll joint. So I'm just going to bone this out. So I'm just following the bone along nice and gently. Now I always challenge people to try and keep these two muscles together. So let's see if I can do it. If I can't I'm sure I'll have some uh, some of my students 
complaining. Practice what you preach, sir. So, just move that along. Cut through the top there, through the top there. And there we go. So, now we've got to find the joint. And the joint is roughly about here. You can see a hole there. So we're just going to cut into that. Like that. And then, if I turn it this way, then remove it. Love the clean bone. Real time. Okay, so a bit of edge maintenance. So now we tunnel this side. Let's use the tractor. So we've tunneled this side. So now we're going to tunnel this side, meet in the middle, and pull the bone out. Now I'll try and do it from this side so that you can see. By the way, did I get the muscles together? There you go. So we just move through there. Nice and steady. Take your time. And there you go, straight out. Beautiful. So there we go. A deboned shoulder of lamb. I just put it there for you to see. So the next step. We're going to take any excess fat off this. You don't want to take all the fat of it because, uh, as I've said before in other videos, fat is taste, you know, and you, you don't really want to get rid of it all. Otherwise, this could dry up. Here we go. So, always keep looking, be vigilant. Excess fat, bits of gristle, bits of bone chips, blood meat. The butcher will be looking for all of this while working every cut. So now, if we look inside of here, don't want to go too far in there, but here, we have a very big lump of fat there. And inside of it is a gland. You can see the gland, there it is. So we need to remove that. So we need to just pop our knife in and just skim along the meat underneath, like that. There you go, and if I just show you that gland, let's pop that to one side. Okay, so we just put that back. We'll have a look around. Just have a look inside where you've tunnel boned as well. Sometimes there's a big piece of gristle there, which we have here. So we take that out. Look on the end of the neck, that's okay. It's okay. Right, so what we're going to do now, I'll just remove that bit of gristle there. We're going to tuck this through that hole there, and that shank meat is going to lie round about that area there. So you can always tell whether you're a good butcher <laughs> by the size of this hole here. If you struggle getting that in there, then you've done a good job of it. So. Let's have a look. I don't think that's too bad. So we popped it through the hole. Just turn it round, lay it flat, get it into a nice shape, like so. Just remove that, remove that. So there we go. Now we're going to roll it over. Let's have a look what we've got. Just tuck that in, and then a beautiful shoulder of lamb ready to be rolled. Before I do roll it, I'm just going to do a bit of diamond scoring across here because it always looks nice when you cook it. Get rid of that blood there. So we'll lay it out flat, like so. And it's only a very light, just like that, you're not really going through like that. Just lightly scoring it across. That'll do. So we'll roll it up again. And then we'll tie it up. So we've got our butcher's twine here. 
So, when we're tying a joint, we always look for the fat part of the joint first, really. If you used to tie it there, it would squeeze all that muscle up to this end, and you would have a thick end and a thin end. What we're trying to do is get a nice, even joint. Firstly, presentation, it looks much, much better. Secondly, it cooks a lot evener as well. So, we get our first string on there. Now this knot I'm using here is different to the one that I've done in my first video, and I will do another video on this one. It's what we call a Lancashire speed knot. Okay, so now I'm gonna just pop one on the end there. Cut that through. Make sure that's all tucked in. Just put one here. Like so. Now I'm going to put one in there. Now when you're doing this tying, I would always recommend trying to get your knots in line. Just feel a bit professional. It's uh, much better for presentation. There are lots of uh, butcher's knots, lots of variations. And I'll show you another two or three as we go along through the channel. So let's pop one more in here. Make sure it's in the right place underneath. Excellent, so we're going to turn that round. So what I'm going to do now is just square off the ends, but that won't go to waste. We'll have that for our mince pile. Let's turn it this way. And there we have it guys, a boned and rolled shoulder of lamb, Somerset lamb in fact. So let me just run through it again. So firstly we uh, took part of the neck bone off, we um, released the breast bone, we left the intercostal muscles in with the shoulder by removing the ribs individually. We then trimmed any excess fat, what we could see. Um, we broke through the joint between the blade bone and the uh, knuckle bone and then we tunnel boned the blade bone and we then tunnel boned the knuckle bone and we deboned the shank bone and put the shank inside of the shoulder of lamb. We also removed that big lump of fat, if you remember, with the gland. And then we stringed it up. So there you go, guys. A deconstructed shoulder of lamb. I hope you enjoyed that video. I really enjoyed doing it. I've added a little bit of string here across there, just to tart it up a little bit. Um, so what have we got here? We've got some bones left, which we can use for stock. We've got the waist, which is there, which is really quite minimal. And that's the way we really want to keep it. We've got some more bones here we can have within stock. We've got some beautiful diced lamb there, which we can use for a curry or a stew or um, anything really. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll catch you next time on the Urban Butchery Channel. Skills for life. <laughs>